Good afternoon. Hure Mirad. Having to speak almost at the end of an event like this is never an easy task. Therefore, I am quite thankful to the organizers of this event who carefully planned this program so that there is a musical rendition to refresh your minds and to help you to bear with me a little while longer. Also, being a musician myself, I must confess that that beautiful rendition has also helped to calm my nerves. But then it occurred to me that despite the many presentations I have made in my MBA class over the past year and the various speeches I have given previously, these did not quite prepare me for this event. This is the first time I'm sharing my thoughts on studying at MSM in the presence of such an esteemed audience where our Dean, Dr. Ne Professor Dr. Wim Naude, is also present. Now I think I should tell you about this recent encounter I had with the Dean. And it was uh, last Wednesday, August 31st to be exact, I had a brief meeting with him, and at the end I asked him, is there anything special you would like me to say at the graduation ceremony during my speech? Guess what? I was pleasantly surprised. He quickly got up from his chair, and speaking even in more animated than when we were chatting, he said, quotation, make it light, <laughs> simple, and if possible, add some humor. Even a small joke on the dean will be welcome. <laughs> Close quotation marks. <laughs> With these sentiments, I silently scream a big yes on the inside, thinking to myself, this is no stress and no big fuss. But then afterwards, when I mused intensely on the event, I began to grapple with the thought of not liking to be in the spotlight on an afternoon like this. As by nature, I'm an introvert. Then I struggled with how I should nuance the tone and content of my speech. An added complexity for me is that I enjoy being treated or seen simply without comparison which, for those who really know me, is one of the greatest sources of joy. I firmly believe that any one of the other graduates here from the MM group, MBA, MPhil, or DBA group can fulfill this role with distinction. Therefore, the single and most relevant qualification that I have in delivering this speech is that I am the MBA representative for 2016, 2015 to 2016, who, based on MSM's tradition, delivers the valedictory speech in an afternoon like this. So duty calls. As we must each do from time to time, I have embraced the responsibility with gratitude and a bit of excitement. Our world at the start. Indeed, I'm excited because today is special for all of us. A year ago, the world around us was different. Since then, we are faced with more than a trillion devices in the Internet of Things, cloud computing wars, the recent discovery of an Earth-sized planet in orbit called Proxima Centauri B, the unveiling of the new versions of electric model cars by Tesla, advances in robotics, and the growth of rocket labs worldwide. There's also the historic agreement of the Paris Climate Change Conference, the first meeting of the US and Cuban heads of state since the Cuban Revolution. The explosive revolution, revelation sorry, from the Panama Papers, the mass migration crisis in Europe, an increase in terrorist attacks and the aftershocks of Brexit. Even in sports, we witnessed the end of the reign of the indomitable Sepp Blatter and other high-ranking officials of FIFA, the passing of one of the greatest sporting icons, Muhammad Ali, the perseverance of Serena Williams of the USA to equal Steffi Graf's 20 seconds Grand Slam title in tennis, the triumph of Usain Bolt of Jamaica, who became the first man in history to win three consecutive double gold medals and set three world records in a single Olympic Games competition. And this list can go on and on. 
But this list will be incomplete if I do not mention one other major incident which has been with us even before the start of the academic year. That is, the rise of someone whom I refer to as the loose-lipped Republican candidate for the upcoming U.S. elections, who most of us thought would have faded in the wind with the passage of time. In fact, in December last year, our dear Oliver, marketing lecturer of MSM, MBA program director, and U.S. citizen, said to me, said to me at a special function in the school restaurant, and I quote, Bibi, he will not last. <laughs> Bibi, that's me. There I was thinking, by now the only time I would refer to Trump in my vocabulary, it would be in relation to our dear current Trump of MSM administrative team. Alas, the testing of that null hypothesis is now a global headache. My dear colleagues, on this issue, should he say yes, please join me in one more session with our statistics lecturer, <laughs> Professor Vincent Felkant, who said, who, sorry, so that he can clearly explain how to test and predict an outcome when the confidence level is unknown <laughs> and alpha is undeniably undefined. And to Oliver, I will say, stick to making pronouncement on the wonders of coffee <laughs> Particularly, Curic Coffee Maker. <laughs> Indeed, many things were quite different in September 2015. I vividly recall when we first entered this room back then to listen to the welcome speech by the Dean. For me, the world was my oyster. But I had no idea what the pearl Sorry, I had no idea what pearl I would find in the year ahead. Just the mention of the many nationalities among the student body gave one the sense that this would be an adventurous journey. And the scope for learning from different cultures will be immense. There was a general buzz of excitement and enthusiasm. There can be no denying that the unscripted effects of a multicultural environment such as MSM presents a myriad of opportunities for graduates to build relationships that will be instrumental in redefining our world to make it better for the next generation. In other words, though it may seem like a drop in the ocean, but with its cultural plurality, MSN represents a sign of hope in combating insularity and polarizations of people across the globe. I say this boldly, coming from the islands in the Caribbean, which are also known as paradise, where although each island is separated by vast expanses of water, the idea of sharing and coexisting in communities and workplaces with people from different races, creeds, classes, colors, is such a norm that I feel at home at MSM, and by extension, in Maastricht our MSN journey. In tracing the trajectory of our educational journey at MSN, we see episodes of various high points. For the volume of case studies, <laughs> theories, strategies, and frameworks in business management we discussed and analyzed during the period, it is true to say that MSN did not really change who we are, but it simply reminded us who we could be. Heartfelt thanks to our many lecturers and professors who journeyed with us through the good times and the bad times. Who could forget Professor Van Murik? <laughs> who, apart from teaching us economics, forced us to be punctual by closing the door at the start of each session and then requesting that you sing a song <laughs> to be able to enter the class if you were more than five minutes late. Or the unprecedented enthusiasm of Professor Yoris, who, taught, who taught us both research methods and global supply chain. Not forgetting our own in-house rock star and lecturer <laughs> of global strategy,
Professor Dixon, who made the lecture so interesting, lively, and relaxed that one day, a colleague could not contain himself and just asked, and I quote, what brand of shampoo do you use in your hair? <laughs> Without batting an eyelid, and with his usual smile, he answered, quote, Pantin Pro-V. <laughs> These incidents give insights into the times we shared, learning, building relationships, and the importance of remaining committed to doing what is necessary to yield results rather than what is popular. It will be remiss of me if I do not give special recommendations sorry, to all our supervisors who guided and worked tirelessly with us in the writing of our theses. It is always easy for us as students to think it was a time of real frustration and challenge. But let us think of our supervisors too, for the times they journeyed with us to explain to us why we needed to change the methodology, why the theoretical and managerial implications are weak, or the conceptual model is unclear. Multiplying this by four to five students gives a clear picture of the volume of work they too had to do to get us ready to the stage of submitting a final product <coughs> that at least can stand muster in a defense setting. We, the graduates, say thanks to all of you for sharing your professional and academic experiences, and most of all, for your patience. Through your support, today we are able to succeed in completing our various fields of study and are now recipients of postgraduate certificates in 2016. Certainly, our education was not just about four Ps, Porter's Five Forces, Pestle and Cage Analysis, Star Model, Camp Model, WAC, ANOVA, Bullwhip Effect, Phillips Curve, Cap Table, Stage Gate Approach, Technology S Curve, Force Field Analysis, and on and on and on. If this, if this was the case, we would have lectured, we would have labored, sorry, under a curse. More so, I feel confident that we are now better equipped to make a difference, and the time to act is now. This is not to make us wildly exuberant in thinking we are all tops, but instead to temper our emotions into believing we have much more work to do. The many kilometers of memories and gaining knowledge provide us with a platform to becoming a new generation of business leaders who will pioneer and start the course for new possibilities. For most of us, we will be re-entering the world of work, which is both challenging and exhilarating, while for others, the pursuit of further research is a reality. Whichever path we choose, the competition will be intense, and the most flexible and adaptable will be those who stand the best chances of survival. According to Professor Haling, in a fiercely competitive world, we, are, we all face the dilemma of, and in quotation, beat or be eaten. However, as postgraduates of MSM, in our various pursuits, let us not be caught, let us not be caught up in the global rat race. The sentiments of this metaphor is echoed in one of the songs written by the late Bob Marley of Jamaica, the world's greatest reggae singer when he sang, it is a, it is a disgrace to see the human race in a rat race. Don't forget your history. Know your destiny in the abundance of water. The fool is thirsty. Sadly, in so doing, we will prove William Faulkner right, who said that mankind lives not for love, but for lust, for victories without hope, and worst of all, without compassion, and that we live not from the hearts, but from the glands. Therefore, we have a unique opportunity in the palm of our hands to realize new dreams and new possibilities and to be symbols of one love, one heart. Graduates, I'm relying on you to finish this sentence. Let's get together and... All right, great. The road ahead 
As we leave this place this afternoon, though it will not be for the last time, given MSM's active and reputable alum alumni, I would like to leave us graduates with four key messages. Four. Remember that four? Yeah. Four key messages which is relative, reflective, sorry, of the theme of my speech this evening. The theme is facing reality, be a game changer for excellence. Having consulted with the World Intellectual Property <coughs> Rights Organization and obtaining the informal blessings of Professor Dr. Duwal, whom I met for the first time last Wednesday during a DBA defense, I have relabeled these messages, the four key attitudes of high-performing managers and leaders. I promise this will not take much longer. The first key attitude, be innovative. We have been encouraged to ask questions, to observe, to challenge what we see and to hear, to challenge what we see and hear, and more importantly, to look for alternative solutions. In a constantly evolving world stage, we need to be courageous and creative to face hard work, uncertain work, work that may test and even defeat us at times. Now we are all called to leave the comfort of these walls and this city and go back to our various countries or into the wilderness where the real focus of our bottom line will be to make an impact on the world around us. According to Arthur Rock, one of America's first venture capitalists, whom we learned about in our entrepreneurship class. We should look for business opportunities and concepts that will change the way people live or work. We all know that curiosity only kill cats in fairy tales. So let us not be immobilized by fear or failure. Hence, our education and knowledge gained at MSM have indeed armed us with the discipline, aptitude, and analytical skills to be innovative and creative so that we can continue the learning process without, whether or not we are in a formal institution. The second key attitude, be responsible. With a postgraduate degree, temptations loom large for us to go merrily along the path that is characterized by quick and easy money, false values that leads to complete detachment for what is going on in the society, in our country, and in the world in which we live. Indeed, this part may bring us wealth, may cause us to gain immense popularity in certain circles, <coughs> and may even bring us pleasure. However, we should, be, we should not be misled into thinking that there is no distinction between pleasure and success. Moreover, we can sometimes be duped by the lack of recognition or the treatment of social skepticism for graduating or succeeding academically. Notwithstanding, we are called to always be responsible professionals. A, responsible, a responsibility to be not only a mentor, but a role model to help those younger and less fortunate so that they too can aspire to greatness and to pursue excellence. As the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 48, I would like us to be reminded that to whom much is given, much is expected. And in other sacred books, such as the Quran, in the 286th verse, of the Surah al Bakura, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Allah does not cha charge a soul except with that within its capacity. Close quotation marks. It is important to thank all members of the management and administrative team at MSM for providing various opportunities that made the experiences holistic and enjoyable. The third key attitude, be world class. The world in which we live is typified by a competing global workforce. How we live our lives and work in this global environment will determine how people view us, 
how others interact with us, how effective we are in accomplishing our goals, and how far we progress. Indeed, this is deemed the most multifaceted attitude, which requires being the best that we can be, never settling for okay or good enough. Therefore, though none of us is perfect, we should strive to present our projects, our products, and our work so that they convey to the world the image of ourselves with which we are proud to be associated. When I wrote this attitude, I thought of none other than MSM's facilities officer, Mr. Asinio Kwanengbul, the man who always has everything under control. <laughs> Here is a man who is always impeccably dressed and groomed, even when he has to do labor-intensive activities, like lifting boxes and arranging the rooms and the classes. I am sure we have observed that whatever job he carries out, be it simple or complex, no effort is spared in ensuring that it is well done. Join me in showing some appreciation for seeing you. Also, if you try to text on your mobile while walking on the stairs, <laughs> he suddenly appears and gently reminds you, please, no texting on the stairs. <laughs> End of quote. I have been a culprit, but only once. <laughs> Finally, the fourth key attitude, be human. Being human means knowing what you are passionate about and living that passion. This attitude seems fairly simple and obvious, but do we know, do we each know what is our passion? Although I once saw a guy with a t-shirt with the words, I do not use Google, I just ask my wife. <laughs> For this one, not even your partner or Google can help you. According to Paul Mary, and I quote, we cannot Google to find out what's in our heart, what, is our pa what passion lifts us skyward, close quotation marks. If we, if we reflect carefully on our postgraduate journey, this would have come to the fore at one point or another. Therefore, like Mother Teresa, who from last Sunday was acclaimed Saint Teresa of Calcutta, we should use our individual passions in such a way that we each can say with conviction, and I quote, I alone cannot change the world, but I can, I can cast the stone across the waters to create many ripples, close quotation marks. My fellow graduates and colleagues, and you, the audience, would it not be remarkable if we were to adopt these four simple attitudes, convinced that they are not our titles, are what define us? Titles come with our various offices, which, as we all know, are temporary and fleeting. I believe that behind every title is an ordinary man or woman with an extraordinary ability to change the world we live in. This change can be accomplished by using these attitudes to influence and change mindsets around us. Slowly, perhaps one person at a time, with the cumulative impact of spreading into ripples of change by what we say, what we do, and how we conduct sorry, how we conduct ourselves going forward. Fellow graduates, this is not beyond our capacity to achieve. The world is indeed our oyster. Let us from today be the start of something new, something fresh, and go forth and grow pearls. I urge us all to begin today. I thank you. <laughs>